Okay, uh, this is actually going to be a very important equation um, for the rest of the year. And um, it's, it's saying that the work done by a conservative force is equal to the negative change in potential energy. So whenever a conservative force does work, you'll get um, a change in potential energy. But it will actually, the work done will actually equal the negative change in potential energy. Let me give you a, a very simple example of that. Um, here is a here is a crate. It's two kilograms. We're going to lift it up um, three meters to this spot right here. Okay. Uh, when when I lift this up three meters, forget about the work I do. Let's talk about the work gravity does. Let's see, gravity on its way up, gravity is going to be um, downward. That will be the force of gravity downward. And the displacement's up, three meters. And so um, the work done by gravity is, uh, there's a 180 degree angle between those two. The work done by gravity is 20 times 3. It's negative, you know, 20 newtons of force times 3 meters. That's going to be negative 60 joules. Now let's see how much um, the potential energy changed. The change in potential energy, it went from having, let's say, let's call this our potential energy equals zero line. It went from having no potential energy to um, having some. So U final minus U initial. That would be um, U final, I'm thinking that it has MGH, so that's 60 joules, minus um, zero joules. So do you see how the change in potential energy is 60 joules, but the work done by gravity is negative 60 joules? Yeah, so that's why I'm saying that the work done by a conservative force is equal to the negative change in potential energy. If I move that down, gravity would do positive work, but then our change in potential energy would be negative. So that's how that works. All right. Well, that said, um, so the work done by the conservative force is negative delta U. <clears throat> this is saying the same thing. The work done by the conservative force, this is the, the formula for work, is equal to negative delta U. Now let's have this work being done over a straight line, and, and these are going to be in the same direction. The force and the displacement will be in the same direction, so we can disregard the dot product. If these are, if F and DS are in the same direction, then we can disregard that. Then um, um, I want you to see something. What we're doing is we're summing up a bunch of little works. This right here is a little work, and we're summing them up to get a big change in potential energy. But what if I didn't? What if I just did one little work? Just one little work. In other words, I put a force on an object over an infinitesimally small displacement. So if you push on an object and you displace it very, very tiny distance, then you don't get a big change in you. You get a very tiny change in you. That's a very tiny change in potential energy, and this is a very um, small change in displacement. I'm going to bring the ds on the other side. The conservative force, then, is equal to negative du ds. Or sometimes that can be, sometimes we use r for displacement, so negative du dr. Do you remember that equation? Yeah, that equation's just saying that the to, if you know the the function for u, if you want to get the the force, you just take the negative derivative of it. Okay. So um, let me show you one. Let's say that we know that um, the function for potential energy near the Earth's surface, if we know u, is equal to um, this is the function for it. It's mg times, you know how that you think that's h, well, let's call it y for right now. Then um, if you want the force for that, the force will equal the negative derivative of u, 
with respect. I should put S here, but this is all changing in the Y direction, so I'm going to just say Y. So let's take the negative derivative of that with respect to Y. I'm thinking that when you do that, when you take the negative derivative of this with respect to Y, do you know what you get? <clears throat> you get that uh, that's equal to negative MG. We knew that already. Okay, so so that's just to show you how that works. Okay, now, um, supposing you had a graph of potential energy for um, uh, an object, and um, when you move it along a direction, the x direction on a number line. So as you move it down the number line, the potential energy goes up and down. I'm not saying you move the I'm not saying you move the object like this. I'm saying that the put, when you move it down the line, the potential energy of the object starts out real high, goes low, and then goes up again, and then goes low. Now, what's causing this, we're not going to say. Uh, there, there, are, there are definitely uh, systems that behave like this, but for right now, um, let's, not, let's not detail where this graph is actually coming from. Okay. Um, so, uh, it turns out then that if um, the force is the negative derivative of u with respect to x in this case, because that's the direction I'm moving, then um, it turns out that you see how big this slope is right here? It's really big. So that means that the force on this particle is going to be really big. However, you see how the slope is negative? Well, that means that the force is going to be very big and, and positive. So the force right here is big and positive. You know what the force is right here? The force right there is zero. The conservative force right there is zero. We call that a point of equilibrium because that's where the force on the particle is equal to zero. Okay, the force right here, it's a, it's a little smaller than here. But I'm going to tell you that this force is in the negative direction. Why the negative direction? Because it's a positive slope. And because it's a positive slope, you always take the opposite of it because there's a negative in front of here. So the positive slope means that the force will be in the negative direction. Hey, you see at the, the peak right here, if I drew a tangent line to here, you see how that tangent line is zero? Yeah, the slope right there is zero. And so the force right here is also zero. Uh, this force right here is really small. F is small. But is it positive or negative? Well, see how it's it's uh, got a positive slope, so it's negative. Okay, as you go far out there, the force gets less and less and less, and finally it's zero. One other thing. Uh, you might think that these are both in equilibrium, and you'd be right, but one is called stable equilibrium, and the other is called um, non-stable equilibrium. So this is stable equilibrium, because to move that particle, if the particle is at B, to move it to the left or to the right, you have to add energy. It's kind of stuck in that well. And so it's not going to be easy to move it this way or that way. Whereas with this one, if you just nudge the particle, even though there's no force on it there, if you just nudge the particle one way or the other, it will um, move. It will move away from there. So that's called unstable equilibrium. And I'm just about out of time. But that's called unstable equilibrium. All right, thanks.